the, the idea was to tell you what we are doing uh, down in uh, in Montevideo, in Uruguay. Uh, I don't think I have a picture of the map here, but I hope you remember where uh, Uruguay is. It's just a small country in the middle of uh, Brazil and Argentina, which are giants. Uh, but uh, we'll, I mean, uh, I hope I will convince you we can do uh, uh, same level of science at least, at the very least. So, uh, just would like to mention that and it's not in the acknowledgments, but it's here. I'm here now as an as a associate uh, for the ACTP, so I, I, I just acknowledge the um the, the support uh, provided by the actp um and yes essentially the idea was to tell you what we are doing uh in in this uh in this field uh, it's something that is relatively new and it's being called physical virology uh, or or physical and in our case computational virology but before going to that uh, i will just like to to introduce what we have been doing uh sorry Sorry, I saw some writing. Then we know. Ah, okay. Might be, might be. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, so this is, I mean, something that we have been uh, doing from the methodological development uh, field that allow us to treat uh, complete virus, uh, um, virus-like particles or or variants. Uh, and it's essentially, uh, I won't go too much into the details, but this is the development of something that is called a coarse grain um uh, model of course hamiltonian actually uh, so it's the idea of uh, having uh, simplified representations uh, for uh, molecules uh, that allow to um, have a, a a significant speed up in the in the calculations so using this kind of simplified representations i will just show you uh, in a moment um the idea is that you can mm, gain like two or three orders of magnitude in the speed of the of the calculation so you can using small computers you can do a simulation of uh, relatively uh, relatively large uh, viruses or, or or biological assemblies uh, and this is and these are the, the guys now in the group uh, Ezequiel I mean Martin some of you know let me see if I can uh get the pointers work here it's here I got it thanks um I guess some of you know uh it this time okay uh some of you know uh martin who has been here for uh for a short uh, term fellowship working uh, the, also with, with alessandro and the other guys uh are also members of the group uh, Ezekiel is actually uh we consider him a member of the group but he has actually working in uh, in uh, in argentina as a postdoc of conicet and there's a lot of our people um that have participated in what i'm going to show you um and because this stuff is not relative it's not really new it's relatively old we have been working on this for 10 years or so so the idea at the when when i mean when i arrived to montevideo uh, is that we I realized that uh may have been obvious but i realized that we couldn't be competitive in in in, in simulations um just because we don't have the same size of computers the same facilities that are available in the um, uh, in the northern hemisphere, so we started with this with the development of this that now we call CIRA, uh, which stands for uh, the South American Initiative for a Rapid and Accurate Hamiltonian, and it is essentially a suite for simulations of biological uh, molecules. When you run a simulation, you, what you need to do is to have uh, a precise description of every single piece in your in your computing system, and this is something that you usually if you work on the on the uh, on the wet side of the of the biology, you you never think of where are all the waters or all the ions or all the compounds that you use. Or but in, but you have to to uh, know the the precise information in time and space of every atom in your system in, in order to compute the dynamics of of those uh, atoms. So if you want to understand interactions for these kind of things, then you really uh, require a, a, a relatively precise and computationally expensive um uh, way of, of knowing the positions and eventually velocities and the way they interact all the components all the molecular components so if you want to think in something which is simplified then you have to invent yourself a new universe it's like playing to be god i always say uh, because i decide what which are the, the new molecules that we create so the idea was like uh, over 10 years ago to, to have a, a, a representation for each of the main components of the cell and we started with uh, with nucleic acids, so we have a representation for a simplified representation for DNA. When I say simplified, 
is like wherever you see a, a sphere, we have something which is similar to a, to an atom. We call it just a bead because it's a more uh, it's not really an atom. Uh, and the idea is that we replace in our new universe um, the the position of all the the real say uh, atoms by positions of these effective interaction points or or bits as we call it in the jargon. Uh, that is uh, obviously it is immediate to realize that you have only uh, six bits here, but if you count the atoms, even, even including the the hydrogens, you have all, over thirty atoms. So you have a, a significant reduction of the number of components in your system, right? So this is the first part uh, uh, that will give you a gain in in velocity when you calculate the the uh, the dynamics of a molecule because you don't really have to keep a, a trace of all uh the position of all the atoms but you reduce significantly the number of the atoms second part is actually the dynamics of bulkier objects is uh slower than the dynamics of smaller objects so in a biological system a hydrogen atom bound to an oxygen is the fastest uh, oscillating thing so you, you if you want to to analyze the dynamics of these kind of things you have to be sure that you are taking pictures uh, like in a movie uh, but in, in in with a certain speed that allow you to see a, comp a continuous uh, movie okay so if you use this kind of approach um actually you can also go like faster in in the the, the number of, of pictures that you have to take so you, you need less pictures and then you can go much faster in the calculations with the stuff that we have created we have a speed up between two or three orders of magnitude faster so uh, essentially our computers are like a hundred times slower than in the, in the supercomputer center but then since we can calculate like a hundred times faster then we can still remain competitive so this is essentially the idea uh, of course you can stop me and uh, ask me questions yeah please those bits yeah between them are bits or they can move uh let me just press again this is okay i will skip this you have like a, a planner structure those beats let's say mm -hmm. cannot go to yeah them. right go good together but you have maybe other beats that yes uh them. it it depends i mean it's it works pretty much like in any real molecule suppose that you have a benzene ring then it is planar and so in and and, and to represent this planarity you use speci specific um, terms in a mathematical equation that force this clarity is the very same in our case so in, in wherever you have a, um, a ring uh something like uh well you cannot uh, let me go back yeah. like uh yeah it's not here either but these bits are are bound together these three guys here with this here and we have we have terms that ensure the planarity of this just that you will have terms that will ensure the planarity of uh, of the base in a, in a fully atomistic case uh, indeed and this is sorry uh, it's, it's more for specialists uh, we use the same hamiltonian function to describe these molecules that is used uh, with any uh, molecular dynamics um, um, program so what another um, thing that uh, helps the the speed up uh, is essentially that we can plug this into any uh, molecular dynamics engine which is optimized for for instance gpus uh, or or whatever you want so we we really can plug this into um into gromax ember uh, namd uh, which are the most common programs and use all the acceleration tricks that the, the people have been uh, optimizing and, and actually inventing during the last 30 40 years Actually, CIRA is part of uh, Ember since uh, 2020. Is in the in the official release, and so the force field is in the official release of Ember. Yeah. How do we compute or model the interaction between uh, those bits? Because yes, uh, great. Um, because we have, I mean, since we have the same Hamiltonian, then we have for each bit we have partial charges and Van der Waals uh, radius and 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 dips in in the in the function. Uh, so we can it, it, precisely in the same way that you do with molecular dynamics. So for for when you calculate when you run the calculation, actually the molecular dynamics engine will not know that it's running a, a coarse grain representation. It's just another force field, just with less bits or less interaction points. Um, did I answer? Yeah. yeah okay so we have representations for i was saying for well uh, nucleic acid water and solvent uh these are for for proteins i'm, I'm going fast 
But essentially, the, the idea is always the same. We have something like, I don't know, in methionine, uh, in, we have three interaction points or bits for the backbone and only one for the side chain. Then the, the degree of, of complexity varies with the, the complexity of the molecule we want to represent. But we have also representations for, for lipids, where you, it is, in these cases, uh, easier to recognize the, the, the acidic tails and, and the, the, uh, the polar heads and so on. We have the same uh, representation for uh, post-translational uh, post, uh, um, uh, modifications in proteins, at least the most common. Um, metal ions, essentially those bound uh, to uh, protein and DNA, having a, a functional role. Um, uh, and eventually we also, I mean, with this, obviously you can build uh, something and I hope you will recognize as a nucleosome. So the, in green, you have a simplified protein and, and in, in blue and, and red, you have a, a simplified DNA, which is wrapped around uh, the histone uh, core. Uh, we have uh, just uh, finished a, a representation of glycans, uh, which can also be uh, used uh, as a glycosylation in proteins. So essentially, well, uh, essentially, we have now representations for, but for RNA, which is still in, under development, and has been under development for for many years. But for RNA, we can uh, cover most of the of the diversity in in, in biology. Um, and with the with the force field, it also comes with the with the, um, a package of utilities that allow to. I mean, the, you can download the the the, the force field. And do the mapping from full represent, full atomic representation to coarse grain. Um, you can all the um, say it, um, you can build the topologies, run simulations, and analyze those, and, and then eventually also back map to uh, to atomistic representation. So it goes like uh, all this way, and eventually it can go back to retrieve the fully atomistic uh, coordinates from a coarse grain uh, representation. So this is kind of an introduction, just to say. Uh, that everything I'm going to show you is uh, having done with simplified representations, which are called coarse grain, or in some cases, something which is multi scale in the sense that coarse grain representations coexist with atomistic ones or with a coarser representation, for instance, for the solvent. Okay. Uh, however, since we have um, a resolution which goes at, at the level of a single residue, as you can maybe see here. Um, then you can think of the simulations as you can think of the simulations in a fully atomistic uh, uh, environment. Okay. Um, so let's go to the viruses. The first, I mean, wh why would you like to do a simulation of a virus? Well, I think that the, the, the answer is pretty obvious. You may have a, a, a single component, like say a protein in, in the capsule of a virus, which has certain degrees of freedoms, but this, it may not be a representative of, um, uh, of the reality of how the, this protein interacts with the neighbors and eventually how eventually if it approaches to something it will change the conformation but some of those changes are only possible uh, in certain ways and, and are like kind of blocked when they are uh, in a in a compact uh, conformation so eventually uh, if you are really interested in interactions or understanding for instance the packaging of, of the virus then you really have to go uh, to a representation in which you include the most uh, the, 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 all the components that you can include into your representation. And this is a field that started uh, actually uh, some time ago in 2006 uh, with the first simulation uh, of, uh, it's, it's actually it's not real virus, it's satellite uh, tobacco mosaic virus. So it's, it's a very small and tiny, uh, by, and, and by the time the simulation was only 13 nanoseconds, uh, I don't know, the folding of a protein usually takes from microseconds to seconds, stuff like that. The, the breaking and forming of, uh, of a hydrogen bone, it's in the order of picoseconds. Uh, so this is really a small simulation, but was at the time was a demonstration of brute force. Um, and the, the computer that was, I mean, that was running a computer that costed like I don't remember if 200 or 400 million dollars or stuff like that. Uh, but it actually was something that started a, a, a whole era of uh, simulation of people started to say, okay, if we have the capacity to do that, then we should go uh, for that. And this comes from a review, it's like the outdated, um, but I think it, the, the global picture haven't changed that much. If you look in the, into PubMed for uh, simulations and, and these particular viruses, this is what you you get. So these are the the, the number of publications 
uh, along the years uh, um, speaking about simulations of, uh, of viruses. Obviously, you can see that in 2020, uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, SARS uh, pick it out. Uh, and this is a gallery of, um, I think, all uh, up to this uh, day, all the viruses that were simulated. I don't have a list here, uh, but this is the caps of HIV, this is a flavivirus, and this is influenza, this is uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, this is a piece of uh, uh, Ebola. Uh, and essentially, what you see here is the, the evolution of the size of the system. So the bigger the virus, the bigger the computational time that you will need to, to, to run simulations that are essentially meaningful to, to something. Uh, and you see that the, the, the size of the system and the time of the simulation goes up with the, with the, with the time. So eventually bigger virus are being simulated, uh, simulated more, uh, more recently, uh, because essentially we have the capacity uh, to do that. So uh, this is one of the limitations. The other limitation that you have uh, when you have to build a virus uh, and, and build in the sense of, 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 of uh, convincing computers, say, to, to simulate that, uh, is that it's kind of complicated because, uh, as I said at the beginning, you have to know, uh, not only have to know the position of each single component of, of the system, but if you are building something which is a closed system, then you have to know, for instance, the precise number of waters that you have to put inside the virus because, because they won't communicate with the exterior during the simulation. So for instance, if you do, don't put so many waters as you would need or lipids, if, if, if it is an enveloped virus, then essentially the, the membrane will be distorted. Eventually you will have pressure uh, issues that will uh, squeeze your, your viral particle. So the, 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 the process of building up this kind of huge uh, molecular assemblies, you can see the number of, of the system size here in, in atoms, it goes to uh, tens of millions. So doing and dealing with that um, kind of problems is complicated. Uh, so essentially what you need is uh, high, uh, high performing computing facilities. We have that solved with the stuff I, I showed you before. So the development of a force field that can, um, can reduce the computational cost for the calculations uh, and also some methodological developments that will allow uh, to create this kind of, of, of assemblies in a relatively systematic way. So we did that too. Um, and essentially what we have is a way, I won't go into too much into the details, but we have a way uh, to start, I mean, to, to construct this. Uh, this would be, for instance, a, 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 an image of a Zika virus, which has different layers, the gray stuff, it's a supra coarse grain molecule. You can imagine that if you are simulating a virus and you don't know uh, the coordinates of the genome, which is in most of the case, if not at all, um, you want the, 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 the original, the most reasonable uh, guess is to fill everything with water. But this is going, it's going to be a water that you, you will be spending a lot of computational money or computational time uh, to simulate, but you don't care at all because it's just water in the bulk in the center of a big, uh, big uh, place just surrounded by another molecules of water. So essentially what we use is a multi-scale approach in which we have different uh, granularities of solvents. And then you have to build this. And then on top of that, you have a normal water and then you have the lipids and then you have the proteins. And then eventually you have more water, ions uh, and every component in the system. Okay, so that you can, essentially you can construct this. And we did this in collaboration with, with, um, um, with people at the University of Campinas uh, with Leandro Martinez. Uh, and, and we ended up with a, essentially with a sort of machinery that you put all the components and get out uh, virus like particles ready to, to, to produce simulations. Um, so with the previous stuff on this, we have kind of all components to create some, a sort of machinery that eventually will allow us uh, to run simulations for, of entire viruses and eventually trying to be predicted uh, uh, about uh, dynamics or where to introduce mutations or how to modulate uh, in any uh, in any sort uh, the, 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 the assembly or, or the behavior of those virus, uh, virus like particles. Um, so what comes next, next is uh, three examples of stuff we have done using this computation uh, a computational approach uh, to address um, um, different viruses. 
I will start with the simple one, the, the, the simplest one that we have. It's a porcine circovirus, essentially it's a type two, which infects um, pigs. It, I mean, the, the, the family of the circoviruses is the smallest uh, virus that uh, family that is able to infect mammals. It's a circular single strand DNA with very small uh, genome. Um, well, the rest you, you can you can read, but essentially what was interesting uh, in our case is that since this is a small virus, we can run uh, simulations for a long time and, and many uh, variants uh, in different conditions. But also we can do uh, all the 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 the, the um, uh, I mean we can construct the virus-like particles uh, in the institute. So we can do the whole thing from the in silico to the in vitro, and then eventually also uh, to the cells, uh, to living cells, uh, all within the institute and, and, and uh, just uh, next door. Uh, so something that, and, and we started to, to develop some, some interest in this uh, virus. Uh, ideally, and I mean, the, the prime uh, interest was uh, that of, of uh, create vaccines using, using these uh, virus-like particles. Um, and essentially what we did, was uh, running uh, simulations of that and then using uh, um, this kind of approach essentially what we can do is we can for instance run simulations and increase the temperature uh, progressively during the simulation what you're seeing here is the root mean square deviation so how much it deviates from the initial conformation uh, so essentially there is a what you see here is kind of two uh, at least two um, two regimes and the first part the virus remains more or less stable, and then after a certain point, it goes up in 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 temperature ramps that are best, uh, better, um, distinguishable from from this graph. Then you can, since you are dealing with simulations and you have the trace for every single particle, every single uh, um, bit, if you want, then you can go and, and analyze more precisely. For instance, where uh, if in, in in symmetry axis, where there are some uh, some positions which are more labile. Or more prone uh, with a smaller temperature to to um, uh, experience distortions, and what you see in the different colors here uh, is the same quantity. So how much it moves from initial from initial conformation uh, in a neighborhood neighborhood of um, symmetry axis. This is so in green. This for the for the five uh, symmetry axis, and then uh, three and, and and two. As I said, what you see is that the, the virus start to to break uh, uh and mostly uh along the the fivefold uh, symmetry axis and then if you start to cross this information um some interesting features come out and what you see here is uh in, in red is uh just uh, uh the result of a sequence alignment in which we calculated the conservation so if you have uh, the the upper peaks are amino acids which are uh, uh, completely conserved, and the lower peaks are regions with very low conservation. What you see in the second panel is the right, uh, root mean square fluctuations. Uh, these essentially are indications of where these amino acids are fluctuating more or less. So these peaks here essentially tells you of where this virus moves more with the temperature. So if there are regions which are more flexible or not, and then you can also combine this with an analysis along the simulations of the solvent accessible surface. So you can get an idea of the conservation, the flexibility, and the accessibility to the solvent. See, as I hope you may uh, notice, wherever there is um, there is a low conservation peak here, there is a high a high peak here for flexibility, and also a high peak here. Uh, for accessibility. So essentially, this tells you that the virus, I mean, th there are some amino acids in the virus that are not conserved, and these are the same that are very flexible and are exposed to the solvent. So these sets of amino acids are uh, not apparently not necessary for, uh, for, the, for the efficient replication of the virus, and it's something that works as a, as a reservoir for uh for um for variability that eventually is also associated i don't have the data here but uh, trust me is also associated with the with the recognition by antibodies so it's kind of a scheme that the virus can uh, change um without affecting uh the stability uh, of the protein because these regions here are more stable and are not 
corresponding to those ones. So analyzing these kind of these kind of things, you can eventually uh, come up with um, uh, uh, with predictions about mutations. And this is what we did because uh, eventually we want to to um, make vaccines out of this. So we uh, want to have VLPs that are very stable. Uh, and the, our way to to control that the, the the VLPs are stable uh, because of experimental setup we have available is essentially put them to uh, to a temperature. Um, so this is a wild type that we can produce. This is one mutation. I won't uh, disclose the, the name of the mutation because of possible IP issues. But essentially, we can the, the pictures. Uh, I mean, as are uh, ten images in which you can see uh, the formation of uh, of the wild type BLPs and uh, and uh, the, the mutation. They are essentially the same, and they have all the same properties in in terms of recognition. We we internalize uh, both of them, and we can follow them. To the nucleus and and so on, um, and the most interesting thing in, in relation with with all that is that when you uh, run uh, when you uh, expose the the, the VLPs uh, to temperature, uh, what you are seeing here is uh, the ratio of fluorescence at, at 350 and 330, which essentially tells you about the exposure of tryptophans and tyrosines in the in the in the structure of the of the capsid. So the wild type melts at the what type is, is the red one melts at, at 55 uh, degrees but with the introduction of only one single mutation that we uh, derived from uh, this information that we obtained from the from the simulations we were able uh, and to move the the the, the melting curve uh, like five degrees uh, towards more stable uh toward higher temperatures so more uh, stable um uh, more stable uh, conformations and with that, uh, it was kind of surprising, but we can uh, we can uh, think, uh, take the, the particles and leave it just on the, the desk, and they are stable for months. So they can they, they really ha can have some um, some potential to work as uh, vaccines because if you are speaking about veterinary vaccines, you need stuff that has to be cheap and stable and, and do not require for a, a very uh, specific uh, uh, conservation. Um, um, I mean, that doesn't require for refrigeration or, or this kind of stuff. Uh, so we have a few more of these of these examples, uh, and apparently the recognition is. I mean, since we we can select uh, amino acids that are in the protein-protein interaction, then the recognition by antibodies is not affected by by the mutation. So we can uh, produce more stable uh, virus-like particles. Um, I will change to another uh, subject. No, I want. Hmm. Here goes. Um, another example of this, and this is something we have been working uh, also in collaboration with uh, we, uh, with the Alessandro group. It's about um, uh, study of flaviviruses, in particular Zika virus. You can for sure remember the the, the epidemic in in Brazil. Uh, a few years ago that ended up with uh, with not only i mean with, with many problems but uh, essentially with a microcephaly in in, in child uh, in in newborns uh so for flaviviruses there are no vaccines and the only um the only flavivirus that uh, there is a, a a good vaccine uh well good enough uh it's for uh, yellow fever there are, uh, this year last year they went through a, a few vaccines i guess against the dengue but their effectivity is uh, limited um and there are some some ones for uh for uh, thick born but uh, they're not known for for zika uh there are no specific antivirals uh, most of the people is uh, completely uh, asymptomatic and what triggers some alerts is that besides being uh transmitted uh, by mosquitoes is uh, transmitted vertically uh, from uh, the mother to the fetus and also sexually uh and and it, and it has been re reported that the um, uh it can remain for uh, up to six six months um, in the seven of infected uh, the individuals. So if you put together that most of the people is asymptomatic and then just, and, and then you, you can have the, the disease for many months after that, then it's potentially very very um, uh, very difficult to uh, can be it's potentially very very dangerous. Um, the virus is a positive RNA uh, a virus. Uh, I won't go too much into the details. I guess uh, you, you can uh, you can uh, 
or, or you already know the information or you can get it um anyhow no i mean it's, it's not going to be too much pertinent for what i would like to tell you um but essentially of course as you might imagine we can run simulations with that in this case what you're seeing here is the cryo em uh, density uh, for us for a zika virus um, uh, um, reported like uh, five or six years ago so we can run simulations with that and <clears throat> What you are seeing in this uh, zooming is essentially a superposition of in blue uh, the experimental density and in green and uh, purple uh, the densities that you can calculate from the molecular dynamic simulation. So you do the simulation and calculate an occupational density in average during the simulation. And as you can see, the, the, the superimposition between the two is surprisingly good. Uh, we were actually surprised because of many, many uh, different things. I won't go too much into the details, but in particular, you see that there are some some flat uh, uh, lines here, which corresponds to the membrane, uh, which is not as one could have imagined as perfectly uh, spherical, but has some kind of facets uh, very well defined in, in the density. And also the simulations were able to uh, to reproduce this, this kind of conformations. And since we were able to reproduce that, then we started to look at, at that. And what you see here is the correlation between the two densities, the, 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 the experimental one and, uh, the, um, uh, and the simulated. And you see the, the correlation coefficient between the two uh, densities, if you superimpose them, is in the order of 95%. So we were actually quite uh, surprised about, uh, about that. Um, so, and, and the idea is not to tell you what happened with the proteins because there are very good um, uh, structure salt for the proteins and, and some information about that. But the simulations can, for instance, set light some stuff that you cannot see from the experiment. Uh, some of the, thing, the things that you cannot see from the experiments is the behavior of the membrane. Um, because the membrane here is not very well determined. So what we have after processing of this information is the conformation of the proteins but not the position of the of phospholipids in the membrane. Uh, so what we did with the simulations was uh, to start with, uh, we build up the, the virus, it introduced the position of the, of the lipids, and for the lipids we use, we use three kinds of lipids, phosphatidyl tanonamine, phosphatidyl serine, and phosphatidyl um, choline, which are the three main components of uh, the, the endoplasmic uh, reticulum. And what we we saw in the simulation is what you're seeing now in gray is the proteins, and in red is the head of phosphatidyl serine, which is negatively charged. So this is at time zero, the beginning of the simulation. You see that they are distributed kind of sparsely and, and uniformly uh, across the membrane. But very rapidly after the simulation begins, there is a clustering uh, of phosphatidyl serine that migrates mostly uh, from the outer uh, leaflet to the inner leaflet and localizes uh, just around the blue points. The blue points are uh, either arginines or, or lysines, which are very much, it's, it is a, a, a lysine, which is positive, of course, uh, in, in Zika, but is absolutely conserved in all other uh, flaviviruses. These are just the most famous ones. Um, so we started to, to think that uh, we could really get some information uh, out of this. Uh, in particular, um, I mean, the, the amino acids that generate these uh, are highly conserved, actually absolutely conserved in the, in the family. Uh, all flaviviruses are known to enrich the population of sulfatidyl serine during the, during the infection. So this could be uh, the, 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 one of the reasons why, uh, because this contributes to stabilize the membrane in, in the mature uh, virion. Um, so we, this is what we think it happens. And eventually it would also participate in the pH trigger because it also stabilizes uh, some uh, the, this conformation and helps to maintain uh, a tight conformation in the, in the membrane. So we went to uh, analyze this a bit more in detail. Uh, and to do that, we set up a, a set of comparative systems in which we started with a flat membrane then a flat membrane with a protein, not a viral protein, just another protein that lives in the in the in the ER. Um, then we went increasing the, the complexity uh, of the system to a vesicle, but without any protein. And then 
to the Zika virus, which is actually a vesicle with proteins on top of it. Um, as I said just a minute ago, uh, we use these three kind of lipids uh, in a proportion which is 6, uh, 3, 1, which is roughly the proportion of the endoplasmic reticulum. And what you see, uh, if you analyze uh, the areas per lipid, so the, the space that the lipids occupy on the, on the surface of the membrane, is that uh, if you go to the, uh, to the um, uh, membrane patch, so to the, the flat membrane, the areas per lipid of the three uh, components of the membrane are always in the in this uh, um, side. I mean, in the, in the right side uh, of the um, uh, of the axe, uh, which means that they have a, a higher area per lipid. So the lipids in the flat membrane are more relaxed and can move uh, and, and and occupy more space in the membrane. Then, if you progressively go uh, in uh, through the system, what happens is that you go uh, to the purple uh, values. Is that actually the virus generates a compression, which is huge and I will show you in a moment uh, on the on the membrane um, in order to to further explore that what we did was take this uh, this system here and uh, put it under pressure and started to to build a uh, system that are uh, progressively under bigger and bigger and bigger pressures at one atmosphere in lateral pressure what you see is the distribution of the lipids uh, is in 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 is in, in this fashion so they're all quite um quite wide and particular for that is in can go uh, even reaching a very high uh, level only when we increase the pressure up to 51 uh, atmospheres we reach values which are comparable to those of the zika virus but the point is that is that if we increase the the pressure the other pressure in the membrane then they just break up and this is compatible with the maximum pressures that the membrane can support in, in, has in, in biophysical experiments. So the rupture pressure uh, corresponds roughly, I mean, the, the area per lipid under the, 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 the rupture pressure corresponds to the, uh, to, the, um, to the areas per lipid that the virus generates in the mature uh, virion. Meaning that actually during, I mean, within the, 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 um, the life of the virion, uh, there is a, a huge amount of pressure in the membrane, which eventually cooperates on and, and facilitates the, the diffusion because when when the, the proteins open and the two uh, membranes remain in contact, I mean the, the membrane of the, of the envelope and, uh, and the endosome, then there's a, a lot of tensile uh, energy which is stored already in the viral membrane. This is the last slide about this, but this had a, a <laughs> and, and I was stupid not recognizing that, but it has an immediate uh, technology, technological application. I was speaking with a colleague um, in Mexico. They did um, pseudoviruses. They were also trying to do some vaccines, but the, the, pseudo, the pseudo viruses were very unstable. Uh, so they have to keep it under uh, at minus 20 uh, because uh, if not, they, they would just fall apart. And so thinking of this, uh, the, my, my comment was, you should try to, um, to treat the cells with something that uh, induce the production of ceramides. Ceramides are uh, phospholipids that, um, uh, no, sorry, they are not phospholipids. They are lipids that do not have a phosphate group, uh, but, the, uh, but they, they have a, either they don't have the, 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 um, the polar uh, head, and they uh, contribute to reduce the the the, ten, the surface uh, tension in the membrane. So if you increase the content and, and the content on ceramides, then eventually you will uh, help to uh, to um, uh, to uh, release the pressure. And eventually that was helpful uh, to um, maintain uh, cell viruses at higher temperature and having the the, the, the stability of that. So uh, these kind of things, which are not visible from the experiments. Uh, it's stuff that you, you can, it's kind of immediate, well, not immediate, but it's something that you can very relatively easily to, uh, to, to see from the simulations. And it's something that only came out if you go from single systems to the real ones or the, the more uh, similar to, to the biological cases. Um, how am I doing with the time? Five? Okay. So the last, uh, the last thing I wanted to tell you is about, um, uh, something you you know very well, unfortunately, um, and it's the design of of inhibitors. Uh, it's not about um, whole whole uh, virus simulation. 
but this is the sign on inhibitor that was planned from the beginning thinking uh, in uh, or taking uh, the results from simulations or cryo em uh, data that was published during the the pandemics um i won't i mean i will skip all the details because i'm sure you are tired of all this stuff but just to say that targeting the the, the spike in, in the coronavirus is very difficult uh, this is taken from this uh, this paper uh, because you have many spikes on the virus surface different uh, different uh, forms of the spike in pre-fusion and post-fusion and those in pre-fusion can have three two or one um, um rbds in the upper position or not they can flex a lot and you have a variable number of uh, spikes under the uh, under the the viral uh, surface so you can of course try to do inhibitors that bind somewhere here but actually you would need an uh, inhibitor that, that would uh, inhibit all three uh, RBDs in all the 30, 40 uh, spike proteins um, in, uh, uh, in, a, in the virus. Uh, so thinking on, on that thing and think, thinking in the dimensions and the virus, we came out with, a, 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 as many of the people working in simulations, uh, we wanted to uh, create the, uh, the best inhibitor. Um, and this is something that happens early in the, in the pandemic. Uh, in October 20, uh, 2020, uh, the, the first paper came out in, in Science saying the most potent anti, anti SARS-CoV-2. Uh, December 2020, the most potent, again, the new, newly the most potent, uh, and so on, just February 2021, the highest affinity. So it was immediate, um, uh, essentially, when you don't have so many resources uh, to test, uh, to develop and test in molecules, as uh, in our case, in in South America, it was immediate to realize that that could not compete in, in this race because we didn't have uh, the possibility. So what we decided to do is uh, inspired in the in this mythological Chinese uh, monster, which is called Shan Yu. Uh, it's, a, it's a snake known by its avidity uh, with nine heads. So we decided to create a scaffold that could be flexible enough to accommodate the best ever uh, or, or the best new ones every time um in a in a fashion that could be uh customizable um just changing the, the modules that you can that that are uh, every, every month or were uh, being published every month uh, by the time so essentially what we have is a structure which is self-pentamerizing uh and we and has um protease resistance uh, linkers uh, and has the possibility to uh, incorporate um, small binders. Small binders is the, like the size of a nanobody or small protein uh, at the end and C terminus. So when it pentamerizes, uh, you generate something which has 10 heads and can bind with high avidity uh, to essentially anything. In, a, in this case, anything is uh, the spike protein. This is how it looks like uh, in the in the conformations that we use to, for the simulations. The pentamer, the, I mean, four of the penta of the monomers here are, are represented with the with the surface, and one of them uh, is uh, it contains a binder A and binder B. There is a helix here, and the helices are stitched by uh, disulfide bridges, so it's really stable. You can heat up this thing up to ninety five degrees, and it's still uh, able to uh, to bind uh, uh, SARS CoV two. This is obviously because of the scaffold and the stability of these proteins here. So it depends, but the, the scaffold per se is quite stable. The binders we use uh, inhibit uh, the, the, the entry because they bind to the RBD, which is shown here in green, uh, binding to two epitopes, uh, one here in the top and another one here in the, in the side. The small dots that you see are the variants and, and the black ones are the variants that were reported for all the the the, the variants of concern but the omicron omicron was the first one with a large number of variants and contains all these um, um mutations in the yellow points so the idea is that these kind of molecules can work in this fashion here it can either uh contact one single spike protein and, and inhibiting the three uh, rbds it can contact two neighboring the same virus it can contact two viruses that are neighbor, or it can inhibit the formation of syncytia because if you have spike proteins in two sides of the 
uh, of the membrane, it could intercalate and, and bind to different uh, virus in the same time. So from here, it comes the idea that, uh, of course, uh, we didn't do a, a whole virus simulation because it was expensive. Uh, we were always thinking in these kind of things. Uh, I will skip this and just go to the final results because I think I'm speaking for too long. Uh, so when you uh, express the protein uh, and we did an E. coli, uh, we of course checked that uh, it pentamerized and everything, stability and so on. So this is just um, uh, what happens in the end uh, in collaboration with uh, with some colleagues at the University of, uh, of Santiago in, in, in Chile. Uh, we were able uh, to uh, measure the inhibition uh, of entry in the case of uh, pseudoviruses and in collaboration with uh, Alessandro here uh, we, we we did the same for uh, infective viruses um, if you can just I mean just focus on the uh, on the E50s or E90s uh, um, of the inhibition um, essentially what you see is that we have and just comparing here to different uh, conformation so the same scaffold but with different uh, decoration in the in the binding uh, motifs uh, and essentially uh, if you go to Wuhan uh, I don't know if we focus on on this one here uh, we got uh, 200 um, picomolar or 600 uh, picomolar for this uh, Shanyu 1 or Shanyu 2 uh, and if you go to Omicron uh, you, you can see is that the 50s or, or, or 90s whatever uh, do not uh, go bad. Actually, in the case of Omicron, it really goes to a few uh, picomolars, and we think this is because of the ability, uh, sorry, the ab ability uh, uh, provided uh, to the molecule by the multiplicity of targets. So eventually, one, uh, once one is, is bound, and then eventually it detaches, then there's always another one uh, ready to, to, to do that. So we call this a multibody, because essentially it's like an antibody, but it contains many uh, of these inhibiting uh, or, or binding domains. Uh, so it maximizes uh, the, the ability, and, and, and I think, or, or at least to the best of my knowledge, it is the maximum multiplicity that you can, you can have using a scaffold that is, it comes from a mammalian uh, protein. Uh, so eventually, and obviously we did that because we didn't want it to go against uh, eventually um, immune responses if, if we could escalate this to some therapeutical uh, applications. Um, perhaps, I mean, for sure you can do, and we have some, some constructions, some contracts with using um, bacteria or, or archaea, but if we stay, we stay with this, uh, it is the maximum um, avidity or, 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 or multiplicity that you can have with a mammalian protein. So, uh, in principle, um, it is not only valid for this, we only tested this for, for, for the spike of SARS-CoV-2, but in principle it's completely uh, customizable. So whatever you want to, uh, to inhibit or, or to tackle, uh, then you can just redecorate this and uh, you can have the proteins at high yields in, in E. coli, so, and they uh, just uh, self-pentamerize. Uh, um, so it is really um, nice and, and, and easy to work. Uh, they are super stable and, and they don't, don't produce aggregation. So it's really, uh, really a nice molecule uh, to work with. Um, with this, I will just stop and uh, just go to the, to the acknowledgements. Uh, people who work in, in different parts of the project uh, at the Institute Pasteur in Montevideo, uh, these people work uh, both um, with, uh, with PCB2 and, and uh, SARS-CoV-2 story. Uh, the people in the group, uh, we call the CIRA team, uh, working in the, obviously in the development uh, of CIRA and, and simulations, and uh, people in Pasteur Korea and uh, here in, at the ICGB and the Universidad de Chile uh, who did uh, the experiments in pseudoviruses and, and viruses. And with that, I uh, will uh, stop, and of course, I'll be more than happy to ask questions or comments. Thank you.